Hello everybody, it's uh, Michael with Archimede Design. Uh, today I am going to continue my installation of a aux beam 6 gain switch in my uh, ZR2. Um, I have a Chevy Colorado ZR2 um, Bison Edition with the 2.8 liter Duramax. Uh, my previous video I actually installed the switch box with a special bracket that I made and located that above the battery. Um, at the end of the video you can check out that installation. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get that hooked up with power and then I'm just going to test this just to make sure it works before then I start looking at installing it inside the cap. Alright, so what we have here is the actual switch box uh, with the six different um, uh, switches for the six different buttons on the switch and so this has to be installed one power and then the next thing that we need to do is um, we need to ground it and we need to install it into the fuse box on an accessory switch um, I think we're going to use the F60 position which is right down here um, that is for the defrost on my mirrors which is a 7.5 amp so I've installed that on there onto this side. You'll see that after I crimp this, I even did a shrink um, tubing just to be extra little safe. I'm just gonna wrap that around, tuck that right into its position. So hopefully that's a good spot for it. Let's see, uh, for the ground, the, um, could connect directly to the battery here. There is a spot to add grounds there. Um, I may want to use those once I start doing my lights uh, and auxiliary, but there is also a spot here right up on the body frame back here. So I think I'm going to tap into that for this ground. Again, I am going to have to do some sort of trim along here and possibly here. And it's very possible I don't have my fuse in the right place too. So we'll get through this. Try this one more time. Again, nothing. So am I not plugged into an ACC to give some power to this? Uh, probably not. Maybe not in the right spot. So let's try to determine where we do have ACC then. All right, we're going to try F7. That is the cargo lamp and bed lights. Which I have cargo lamp, but I don't need bed lights, so maybe that'll be a good spot. So that worked other than see it's on. Other than I haven't turned the ACC on yet. Oh no, actually I have. No, I haven't. I don't think I have. So that's actually a live 
slide. So if I had that on there, it would be on all the time. So we'll keep troubleshooting. Right. Unfortunately, I can't get my multimeter inside of there to test it, and I don't have the little adapter thing to do that. So we are going to just try it with the fog lights. All right, now I just turned it just to the first position, nothing. I'm going to turn it to the next position. And I got nothing. Man, why can't they just have an ACC spot that's open and just ready to be used? Don't get that. All right. Searching the internet. Uh, various different people having problems with things only get power when the accessory unit is on and it seems most people use F17 which is the front axle axle actuator which is right here so we'll try that And look at that. What do you know? All right. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to test this before we run anything inside the cab. But just want to go through a quick summary where everything is located. So in the previous video, mounted the control box just under the hood right above the battery. Uh, creating and making this bracket. The, uh, ran my wires down below um, and then um, as well as you up back here is where I grounded the control box and had a little trouble finding which fuse to go to but uh, after some trial and error then finally reading some uh, forms for ZR1 F17 um, is a good place to go. And then finally, battery wise, connected right to this location and ran the cable through. And you'll see I did have the trim right here. So that's where we're at. So the next thing is, is I'm going to this strip some wires so I can attach some alligator clips and test a set of lights that I that I have that aren't necessarily the lights going into this project, but the um, ones that I can use to test. So uh, one last thing too, um, need to actually trim the fuse box a little bit to allow for this wire here to get through. So you gotta you gotta do it on that lip lip as well and also on there All right, we're going to test the light so let's just reconnect here let's switch one So if you have an eight gang switch, um, it actually, the ground goes into the box. Uh, but for the six gang, you actually have to ground your lights in the chassis someplace. So we're gonna hook up power to our light here. I have a, this is just a Nylite that I kind of have
pigtail on that I put together for a previous project. <clears throat> ground and ground, I'll just hook right to the battery. Should be good to go. All right, we got power. Let's, number one. There we go. Nice. Now, if you really want to be to make sure, I would go through and I would check every one of those switches. So I'm going to do that, but we won't show it on the video. I'm just going to go through and check every one of those switches to make sure they work. So you know, sure enough. <clears throat> why it's important to check these things. I uh, was replacing that fuse. It was a 10 amp and I was going to just put a 15 or a 20 in there. And when I took it out, you can see the left side is down really deep. The rest of them are not like that. So when I actually tried to uh, test it, nothing happened. didn't work. Um, try pushing the fuse down a little bit further so either this is gonna have to go back or if I can get in there and somehow get that pulled up a little bit see if that works but that's why you should test them all right so we found a problem with our um, switch box and Luckily, that's not a very complicated thing because it's just switches and wires connected up in the right way. Um, all the, the guts to the technology is actually in the switch that goes inside the cab. So I opened up the back and saw which wire was moving up and down. Um, every time I tried to press in the fuse, it would just press it down. And it might make a connection, but loosely it could cause a short or something else. So I didn't want to fix that. So I took it inside, I opened up the back and literally just one held it in place with the screwdriver and then pressed in the fuse. And then I put a little bit of epoxy on some of those spots that, you know, this might happen on. But uh, yeah, definitely, you know, you get what you pay for. The, uh, you know, one thing I would say is that uh, I would have put some uh, epoxy at each one of those spaces to improve the design so it doesn't become loose or push out of the way. So next, uh, we're going to tackle actually moving that switch into the cab of the ZR2. So reading uh, different forums and watching some other video, they say the best place to put this through is this main grommet that goes through. See, I'm pointing at it right there. So it's just to put a hole in there and run it through there. So we're going to look at that from the other side just to see if that makes sense. Might be even easier to reach from the inside to put a hole through. So that is going to be our spot. So this is the view from the inside of the cap. See I have my red ruler just pointing up to that same grommet on the inside of the cap. So here I'm going to do a cross cut to run the electrical wire in from the cab into the engine chassis. All right, uh, ran the line from the inside of the cab. Here you can see where it goes from the grommet. Sorry, this is a flipped image, but uh, best way to get the camera to it. Next, we'll transition over to look at it from the engine base side. So this is the view um, from the engine chassis. And uh, I put a cross cut in here and pushed it through from the inside and then pulled it through from in here. Um, I would recommend, however, when you're done with this is to put some silicone over this so just to seal it up. 
So the next thing is to determine where we're going to mount this inside the cab. Um, there's definitely plenty of, uh, of the cable that came through that can uh, reach quite far away as in. I'm pretty sure we're going to be tying some of this off and tucking it underneath the console. So plenty of room. It does come with these two brackets so you can mount them and tilt them, tilt the switch however you want. The common place is to put it underneath here in the console using the adhesive stick. On mine though, it's a little bit too narrow to do it there. Another area um, that's a common place to put it is underneath the dash, just by my leg there or on the other side. But they're not really visible though when you're driving and I'd rather have it right out here underneath or near this council. Maybe we can put the bracket in there to have it stick out a little bit, but again, it's still a little bit too wide. I think the 2018 is a little bit more room. And I've seen people mount right up here in this little, little cubby area that isn't really that useful. And it seems to me like that's a great spot to put this. Um, and mount it up against there. And, you know, avoid if mounting down below... I would lose access to that main council area. So yeah, let's shoot for this spot right here. So we'll have to uh, drill a hole so we can run the cabling through as well as a way to mount it to the back side of that opening. So the next thing I want to look at is where I'm going to run the cabling here. And you can see I've removed this trim panel from the driver's side just simply clips in, so I recommend definitely having a trim tool pop these things off. Uh, here you can see this is several clips that it uses. Came out pretty easily. But lots of room here. You can definitely see uh, room for the you know, where we can put in the cable, drill a hole into that fitting. Run it right through there and just tuck everything in behind. So it looks like a really good spot, pretty easy to get to. So next, we'll have to look at removing the uh, panel from the front of this console on the dash. So we need to remove this part, um, and I'm using a trim tool here. There's uh, six actual clips that are holding this in, so you kind of got to work it a little bit. Um, a bit harder to get the ones out in the, from the back side. But uh, just take your time. Get that tool in there, just slide it around. Don't uh, pressure too much here, you break things. Here you'll see that I pop it off after a little bit of effort, and there's two different connection places there for the heated seats. We need to remove those next. So um, the uh, uh, this will give me good access to take this out and drill the holes that I need, but what we need to do now is just use a screwdriver and a set of pliers to remove those two wiring connections. All right, I can't stress so much how careful to be here. It's horrible when you actually pull wires out of these things. You need to press a screwdriver right on that little edge to push that in and then pull the whole thing out using a plier. So take your time. Don't break anything. And now that we have this free, we can look at how we're going to drill some holes in there for a mount. All right, sorry for the shaky video. I want to show you where I routed this thing, uh, this cable. So coming up to the grommet, comes down across. I'm going to use some zip ties in there to tie that to those cables that are in there to keep it up out of the way. And it's just going to come down and back underneath the council through there. And I'm just tucking the excess back up in there. There wasn't a whole lot, so um, that's where it is, just underneath. Council 
right through the right underneath the shifter right there, and then bring it up over under this trim and around through that opening and then out through the center here. So here I'm uh, prepping that piece of the council I took out to mount it. So first just uh, attaching the uh, one side of the bracket to the ox beam. So I'm looking to mount this right over the front of that hole. So I'll have to add some spacers, but basically where it sits right there, kind of on the bottom. So I want to mark off uh, where these are going to be located at. And basically two and three eighths inch is apart. All right, next I need to drill a hole for to put that harness through. Just do a pilot, and then I'm going to use a hole bore bit to open that up about three quarters of an inch. So after I got it installed, um, it didn't really look that great. The, uh, as you can see, the switch panel sticks out way out far from the space of this. Uh, I really didn't even w realize why I didn't anticipate that by visualizing it. So we're going to go back to the drawing board, and I'm actually going to design and do a custom 3D printed bracket. was um, I had drilled those holes uh, three quarter of an inch on that center hole for to allow the cord to go the cable to go through and then two mounting holes and attempted to then mount with some spacers the brackets that they gave us and didn't look really good so pretty much useless throw those aside which also means I don't need any of this hardware. So we're not going to do anything with that hardware either. So the next step was to design a fitting and um, for a 3D printed mounting bracket or something to fit in there to mount it the way that I wanted. So with the magic of video and time I have a 3d printed bracket so uh, you'll see that uh, it has some um, threads inserted uh, I do have a video on how to do inset threads in 3d printing and this is meant with these little tabs you'll see here right there to basically insert into that kind of help to hold it into center and mount right there 
And I also uh, 3D printed this flexible grommet to go in there. This one's clear. I probably normally do them in black and and um, might even design it a little bit different. But uh, one of the key things is you have to slit that so you can actually get it around the cable. So I think the first thing we're going to do is put that in. In fact, I can't put it in just yet. I got to put it around here first. Everything's kind of got to go in the right order. <laughs> Otherwise, things won't necessarily fit together the way that you want them to. Uh, let's do it from the other side. There, now we have a grommet in there just to help with uh, any kind of wear or vibration on that cable. Right, next is... Um, it's actually going to mount like this. And so we're going to install this on the back side of here. So. so the mounting brackets actually come with uh, two sets of these three millimeter screws. Um, I think I need to use the longer ones of those sets. And, uh, and to be honest with you, I lost those. I can't find them. So these are others that I have here in my garage. Going to open this hole up just a little bit. Um, inevitably, you know, measuring the 3D printing. Um, it's never exact. Calipers aren't the best. So the threaded inserts on the 3D printed part are 4 millimeter. So I'm using a 4 millimeter by 50 millimeter in length machine screw. And I also added a washer and lock washer on the back. So, there we have it. Mounted in there with the bracket, attached to the back. You can see why I needed the inserts because I was, you know, I needed a blind spot to thread into. And now I can install it in the truck. Let's get this bad boy back in. Um, I do like to uh, put a little bit of dielectric grease in these connections, especially on the ones outside where the lights and things connect. All right, before I put this thing in, I just want to make sure it's still working. <laughs> Looks like I have power. I already did, saw me go through the whole test and find out there was actually a problem I had to fix in the uh, switch box and the, on the inside. So, um, turn that back off. All the 
those fittings back in. That's for my uh, heated seats. And then just tuck all this stuff up underneath. I do love when you get YouTube videos and it all looks flawless, right? And it's never exactly easy. You gotta fight things every now and then. That's what I like to show. I like to show the fact that things don't always go as smooth as you would think they would. in the way there I mean that looks pretty sweet doesn't it very very nice and there are individual stickers here um, I still have to install my lights that I want to put in in my rear bumper um, I can uh, I'll quick walk around and show you where that's going to be, but uh, haven't ordered those yet. So, all right, thank you everybody for watching my installation of the Oxbeam six gang switch controller. Uh, so, between the two videos, there's a complete installation in my Chevy ZR2 uh, with the diesel engine in it, and uh, I will leave uh, some videos on the initial video on there. Um, 3D printing of the bracket. So, uh, designed the bracket, went through a, a couple different iterations, and then the uh, then the grommet. So, if you're interested now to make like a custom grommet, you can you know look at one of my videos on doing parametric design on Fusion 360. Uh, I'm sure you can find a, a a grommet that's a three quarters of an inch in diameter, but uh, it's always fun to make some of those things and do them custom. Anyway. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, please subscribe below. Click the like button. Would uh, love for you to subscribe and then watch some of my future videos.